Hey guys, we are back with some more Seattle franchise mode. And in this one, we are going to take a look at the captains here just to make sure that everything is good because we didn't do that last time. So Brodine is still the captain. And alternates, Nuge and Zadina, I agree with that. Remember, Pavelski retired, so we have to have a new alternate, and that alternate will be Philip Zadina. Uh, he's had very consistent improvement every year he's been here, and he ha is on his big contract. He's a first-liner. He's 90 overall. I think he deserves it. Now, I here's the thing, though, about Nuge. We're definitely going to have to move him because... Or, or just let him walk to free agency. Because when you take a look here at the money that Henrich, Crab, and Fawcett want. We'll start out with Fawcett here. Off contract extension, 7 mil for 2 years. Henrich, 9 mil for 4 years. Crab, pretty much 9 mil for 4 years as well. That is nearly... I believe that is... Do some mental math here believe that's around 25 or 26 million on three players. I don't see how we're going to be able to avoid trading anybody in this uh, upcoming draft or, or even the trade deadline because one of these goaltenders is going to have to go. Nine million is just too much spent on goaltending unless it's on like one elite goaltender. And then defenseman, uh, it's either going to be Brodeen or... Or Tanev. Well, Tanev will probably be off the books anyway. Uh, 6.5. Either that or he'll be, he'll be a lot lower of a contract. Bo U, 6.1. Pouliot, Alexiak. Well, Alexiak, keep in mind, was a filling contract. We didn't have to pay him 5 mil. But, yeah. I, I don't see how we can go through this year without making... Uh, a, a trade to free up the cap, at least at the draft. So we're going to have to make some key decisions this year. So we're going to have to set up the team for success. And part of that, if we take a look at the AHL, look at this. Graham McMuffin, finally an 81 overall, an NHL overall. We're not going to be calling him up just yet because I'm going to save that for when and if we trade... Nuge. This is more than likely Nuge's last year is in, in Seattle because we're just not going to be able to afford him. He's making 8.2 right now, and with all the rookies we have coming in, it's just not going to happen. And then, or uh, not coming, not the rookies coming in, I'm just saying like the rookie contracts expiring and then turning into bigger contracts. Tuka Pistola, 80 overall defenseman. He's another one who we, we can consider calling up. Maybe trade someone like Pouliot or Beaulieu or something. I guess it'll be situational on who we trade. And then and then Henrik Edler, uh, Edward Pody, all of these guys we can bring up. So we have a lot of flexibility. We have a lot of depth. And that's very good for this team. So we're going to sim past the preseason here. I am not going to do anything in preseason. But uh, actually before... We go through preseason. I'm just going to set the injuries to off. Don't need any of that nonsense happening in the preseason. Don't need uh, Philip Zadina out for like four months. <laughs> so we'll turn it back on when the regular season starts. But uh, for the first game of the regular season against Boston, I believe it is, for our home opener, we're going to be doing a commentary third period. So we haven't done one of those in a while, at least not in the regular season. So let's get through the preseason here and then we will uh yeah we'll get to that commentary third period all right so we are at the day before the home opener against boston so let's set injuries back on just showing you guys here so, so just so you know uh, injuries are back on and we will simulate up to the day and then we'll uh we'll get into it because i believe we're all set here uh, unless Corpusello isn't starting, because uh, I do want Corpusello starting to start off the season. He has been our goaltender since pretty much day one. So, yep, indeed, Corpusello is starting. Let's get to that game against Boston. Game number one out of 82 in year number seven of the regular season begins now. First period, goal by Jimmy Vesey on Corpusello. Second period, 
Uh, all right, all right. So we are down by two going into the third. Goal by Stuart De Silva and goal by Kyle Palmieri and Sonny Milano on Corpusalo. So let's get into it. The first line out there now for Seattle. Henrich, Zadina, Crab, Boychuk, Brodine. There is no extra attacker as of right now. As of right now, Corpus Salo is back in the net, but probably not for long as Zadina takes that up. And Corpus Salo goes off once again. Zadina takes that shot over to Henrich for Zadina. Zadina over to Mowers. Boychuk, Crab to Mowers with the shot. He scores with 20 seconds remaining. And we have a game here. All of a sudden, if Seattle can pull off something in the final 20 seconds, as that is quite the goal right there by Ryan Mowers. His first goal of the season at 1940. And what a pass to the slot from the guy on the right wing. I'm not sure who that was. That might have been Crab. But great shot nonetheless by Ryan Mowers. And we have a one goal game with 20 seconds remaining in the third. Can we get another one? Let's see. Palmieri takes that for Boston. Poked by Zadina. Zadina uh, gets that over to Brodeen. Back for Zadina's shot. Oh my goodness, Crab almost had a tie game right there on his stick. But Rask makes the glove save. My goodness. First line still out there for Seattle looking to get something going as Brodeen has it. Gets it to a boy chuck from Mowers. For Brodeen, the shot with two seconds remaining, and that's going to go wide, and Seattle will fall just short in this game by the score of 3-2 to two to Boston. Ah, that, uh, all right, okay, it's it's only game one, no need to complain here, but I really, man, that, that shot by Crab with nine seconds remaining, ah, I wish that had gone in, that would be so, that would have been so awesome. Let's get back to the menu. Mowers for MVP. I hope so. <laughs> Alright, we're back here in the menu, and we're just going to do some good old fast simulation here, going through the season. Let's go through one month first here. Games against Nashville, Columbus, Montreal. And that is going to be a 3-1 to one win. First victory of the season for Seattle right there. Good job, boys. And then a 5-2 to two victory against Montreal. Alright, so... uh a little bit of back and forth here. Uh, loss, win, loss, win. Overtime loss, I believe. Uh, scouting assignment. We will go WHL defenseman six weeks. So, yeah, 2-2-1 two, two, and one to start the season. I mean, I can't really complain as of right now. Again, a little too early to be judging this team. But it looks like we're off to a pretty good start. Points in eight, or uh, six out of our first eight games. So... Can't complain. And then we end off the month strong. 7-2-1 in October. Let's check out the stats for the beginning of the season. Danny Henrich with 10 points to lead the squad so far. Let's see who the other leaders are. We got Philip Zadina with 9 points. Stuart De Silva with 8. Nelson Crabb with 8. All assists. Majority of them are assists, actually. Only one goal, surprisingly. So... Ryan Mowers with five goals. That That's like the opposite of what you would expect. Nelson Crabb, the sniper, getting seven assists and eight points. And then Ryan Mowers, the playmaker, getting five goals and six points. Okay, that's a little odd. Pete Boychuk with six points. Kreider with five. Pouliot with five. Fawcett with five. Nuge with five. Lilligren with four. Eakin. Athanasiu. Dano with two. And then Bruce Bowyu. Brodeen and Tanev, all with nothing. Mm. All right. It's a good thing <laughs> that we have three capable offensive defensemen in Boychuk, Puglia, and Lilligren. And uh, as of right now, Lilligren is the only minus on defense. Let's check forwards. Kreider and Nuge are minuses, but everyone else is a plus. Let's check goaltender. Oh, right, right. Corpusalo. Corpusalo and Lop. We have to make that decision. So, but I think I got to keep rolling with Corpus Allo now, right now, don't I? Because he's got a 939 save percentage. But on the other hand, he has played 10 games in a row, so it wouldn't hurt to give him a break. So I think I will get Lop in there for two games. 
just to give him a chance to prove himself. I mean, I mean, he's already kind of proven himself because I believe last year he had like a 928 save percentage in 21 games. So he's definitely capable, but I do want to see more out of him. Or not more out of him, but I guess just more from him. Like I want to get a better read on this, if he's going to be consistent throughout his career, you know. And he, so far he has, if you take a look at the lines here, because we're he's not in the stats page. If we go to goaltenders, Lop, take a look at last year, and even all the years before that, been very consistent and uh, in the same percentage department, 921, 917, 916, 928. He's been very, very solid his entire career so far as a professional goaltender, so... We are, uh, no, we are not going to back out. We are going to go back in, and we are going to give Lop a couple of games just to give Corpusalo some rest because, honestly, Corpusalo has been on fire, but, you know, 10 games in a row, it's a little much. We'll give him a break. Don't want him getting injured, you know, because injuries are on. So, other than that, I don't think we really need to change anything as of right now. Brodeen's a plus two. Boychuk is a plus one. Bruce is a plus four. Pulley out to plus one, so not much to complain about as of right now. Besides maybe that third line, because now that I think of it, yeah, that third line is all minus. Minus four, minus five, minus three, so that could be something to watch out for, but that's the only thing that's not really working too well right now, so we'll just leave everything else alone. And we will keep going. So we'll go one more month here. In the month of November, and we'll take it up to December 1st. And against Arizona, that is going to be a loss. 4-1 to loss. Detroit, 8-1-3. and three. They're really good. It's going to be... What's it going to be? We have a trade. I'm going to edit the trade block right now, just so we don't have to deal with this <laughs> throughout the simulation. Just give me one sec here, boys. Two wins and a three wins in a row now. Uh, Detroit. And then... Yeah, we just keep going. A loss against LA. But we are back and at it against Ottawa. A little bit of back and forth here now, actually. Yeah, win, loss, win, loss, win. Win. All right, that's good. That's good. As well, as long as we can keep up this pace for the rest of the year, I think we'll be all right. Yep, 3-2 win against the Rangers. 4-3 loss against the Jets. And against Anaheim, we have... Please win. That'd be nice. You know? 3-2 to two loss. All right. Can't complain. We are 15-7-2. and two, so That should be good enough. Yeah, we're in second right now in the Pacific. Danny Henrich with 22 points in 24 games. Lilligren, 17 points. And that third line looks to have kind of evened out a little bit. Zero. He's, he's Lilligren's even. That's good. That was a grab. 16 points. Zadina, 16 points. Pouliot, four, uh, 15. Looks like he is back to his rate of what he was scoring for these three years right here. Because he is already at 15 points, 24 games in. That's certainly not a 28-point pace, if you ask me. So, uh, I think we can keep everything the same here. Stuart De Silva, 14 points. Boychek with 14. Kreider with 12. Mowers with 11. Nuge with 10. Fawcett with 8. Eakin, Athanasiu. Dano, Bruce, or, uh, well, I, I went a little, got a little ahead of myself there. The cap line, I should call them. Cody Eakin, Andreas Athanasiu, and Philip Dano, all with five points. Rob Bruce with three points. Brodine with one, and then Bowie and Tanev with nothing so far. Goaltenders, Corpusalo, and... Did I forget again? I did. I forgot again. <laughs> but, hey, at least we have an even, uh, we have an even sort of uh, comparison to go off of. So Corpusalo, out of the 13 games he played in, was much better than Lop, but Lop was no slouch either. He was a 925. Corpusalo was just much better at a 939. So I uh, really have no complaints about either of these two. Uh, we'll just sort of rotate with them throughout the season, and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully we can continue up this pace. And if we can, then... Uh, you know, we, we should be in the clear for the playoffs, uh, and if not, then that is very concerning. <laughs> so, now, do I want to get a Pozo or Alexiak in there at some point? Yes, but 
Not at the moment because this team seems to be rolling. And, I mean, the third line is now plus. I mean, that's pretty good. When a line goes down by that many, uh, that many minuses, when there's like minus three, minus four, minus five, and then all of a sudden they're plus two, plus one, and even, that's pretty good. They, they're now officially clicking. So I don't want to touch anything about that. Ikan Athanasiu and Dano, I mean, they're, they're all minuses now, so, but I want to leave that alone because, again, we, for the most part, have been clicking this season. So I don't think there's anything that we need to change as of right now. So we are going to back out once again and continue the simulation as that was a fairly quick month and we're not really falling off too much and there's not much to change. So may as well do another month. Buffalo, Colorado. Let's take a look here. Edit scouting assignment. We will go... Uh, do I want to go for goaltenders? I don't think so. I'll go to U.S. for four six weeks. Let's see what this game against Buffalo is going to be. A 7 to nothing win. Oh, man. Now, that is a game where I want a box score, EA. I want to go back into the box score and see who scored there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we just keep winning with Corpus Allo, man. And even when we lose, it's an overtime or a shootout, so... We just keep getting points here. Loving it. Keep going, boys. It's 27 and 3. And Lilligren has been injured. So here's the first injury of the year. Uh, he is injured until January 5th with a pole groin. So I'm not going to manually replace player. Since I have no idea what's that gonna what that is gonna do, since there's a defenseman in a Ford, it might put like Alexiak there or something, <laughs> you know. So we're gonna put Kyle Pozo in there. That that is where the depth signings really help out because you can really put a pozo like a pozo and Kreider are interchangeable there are so many interchangeable parts on this team it's it's great i love it now who's gonna man the point Boychuk pouliot Kreider. okay so it's probably gonna have to be not bruce yeah he's got a 76 offensive awareness i might have someone double shift here I might double shift Boychuk. What's he done so far on the power play? Four points. Yeah, I'm going to double shift Boychuk here. Because I don't really feel comfortable uh, putting anybody else on there, to be honest. Especially at the point. So, we're just going to roll Boychuk on both power plays. And hopefully that doesn't kill his stamina. <laughs> so, we'll do the same here. That's all good. Extras. We're going to have to put someone on the three on three. So, Boychuk, Bruce. I will put Pouliot here. Just to put another point producer. And goaltenders. Oh, man. Do we... I, here's the thing about the goaltenders. I want to get, like, an even sort of reading on both of them. Just so we can make a fair decision going into the tri and into the draft. So we're going to give Lop another month. Or actually, actually. Wait, we we didn't finish the month. I thought we've <laughs> Never mind. All right. We'll we'll get uh we'll get Corpus Allo back in there. My bad boys. I thought it was the end of the month for some reason. No, an injury happened and we're in the middle of the month, so we'll get <laughs> Corpus Allo back in there. Sorry for the tease, Lop. <laughs> that uh that was kind of mean, but whatever. We're <laughs> we're going to have to keep rolling with Corpus Allo here for the rest of the month. So, games against Nashville, Columbus, Montreal. Nice win. All right. Lost once in a while. Isn't going to hurt us. And then uh, 5 to nothing shutout win against Montreal. Very nice. And Calgary and Carolina. Very nice 6-2 to win. And 2-1 loss. All right. Not the worst thing in the world as we are 23-9-5. This is a good team. This is a very good team. I mean, 51 points. We're first in the NHL. Well, actually, no, we're not. We're second in the NHL. The Boston Bruins are 27, 6, and 4. So, wow. But, uh, yeah, I mean, hey, if we don't win the President's Trophy, then we don't have the curse of the President's Trophy on us for the playoffs. So, that's might, that might be a blessing in, dis in disguise. Because I cannot honestly remember the last time we won the Stanley Cup with the President's Trophy. More or less the Stanley Cup in general. But, <laughs> you know... Always helps when you don't have uh, superstitions on your side, I suppose. So, uh, Henrich with 37 points. 
Stuart DeSilva with 27, Nelson Crabb with 27, Philip Zadina with 26, Derek Puglia already with 25. See, I knew he would rebound if he played with a defensive defenseman. That very nice, very nice season so far from Derek Puglia. Ryan Mowers with 22, Lilligren with 21 and 31, Boychuk with 20. Now, he doesn't appear to be on the same pace as, Will as, as he was the last year, but he is a plus. So do I want to put him back with Tanev or do I keep him with Brodeen? That's a that's a good question actually. Ugh. All right, Nuge with 20, Kreider with 18, Fawcett with 16, Athanasiu with 11. I feel like I pronounce that guy's name differently every single time. <laughs> the Noah Eakin with 8. Bruce with four, Brodine with three, Apozo with two and six, and Boyu with one and 37, Tano, uh, Tano, what? <laughs> Tanev with one and 37 as well. Plus minus, so Bruce plus 16, Fawcett plus 12, Mowers plus 12, all these guys, great. Minuses, the fourth line, I'm not too concerned about that, minus two, minus two, minus one, even for Tanev. Now, goaltenders... Let's see, Corpusalo. Yeah, he's kept that percentage up there, 938. He's making it real tough. This this is going to be tough, I'm telling you. I mean, because you got to choose between age and experience or the young guy who looks like he also has a bright future. You just, man, this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. I'm telling you. Brandon Lopp, let's get him another month. And I think that'll be as far as we go in this in this video because... We got some crucial decisions ahead of us at the trade deadline. And even further at the draft. Uh, Lilligren is available. I will wait a couple games for that. I'll get him back in against Tampa. 4-2 loss and shootout win. Uh, okay, so we skipped ahead against Tampa. So 2 on loss. So we'll get Lilligren back in there. Hopefully he can help with our scoring. And now, who do I take out? How's that pose open noon? Four points in 10 games, plus four. What's he been doing hit-wise? 14. 12 takeaways. Man. This t I like that we have this problem because it's a lot of... It's, it's, it's a good problem. It is. But it, they're almost making it too hard for me to take anybody out. I might take a fourth liner out, maybe Deno. His giveaway to takeaway ratio isn't that great. What about Athanasiu? Ooh, he's is even worse. Eakin, what's he doing? He's good. I'm not taking him out. What's Athanasiu's faceoffs? Forty six. Okay, so I'm gonna take Athanasiu out. I'm gonna put Eakin over here. I'm gonna put Lilligren back in. See, that's the point. That's the great thing about having depth on this team. We can we are so flexible right now with the decisions that we can make. And we'll put Opozo with Eakin and Dano. Yeah. All right. That looks good. And I think we will get Lilligren back on the power play. Yep. Do that. Do that. And I'll actually leave Puglia on the three on three. So. That looks to be good. And Brandon Lopp, what's he been doing? 926. All right, well, I mean, again, I want to get a fair reading at the end of the season for when we have to trade one of these guys more than likely. So we'll keep playing Lopp for the rest of this month, and then we will check the stats once more, and then we'll end things off. Game against Arizona, that is a loss once again. So, ooh. All right, there you go. There you go. Rebounding there against Detroit, two to one win. Defenseman, six weeks, USA, New York, Vancouver. Ooh, six three loss, five to three win. So Lop is definitely a little bit more uh, back and forth seesaw than Corpusalo is. Nine to two win versus Minnesota. My goodness. Uh, Ryan Mowers has been injured with a sprained ankle. Estimated return is January 28th, so I don't think that's too far off from now. That might be like a week. But again, here's the good thing about having the depth that we have. Ryan Nugent Hopkins up to the second line where he fits in. And then 
Athanasiu back in. We'll put you on the fourth line. Put Dano in the center since Athanasiu wasn't doing too well at faceoffs, and put Eakin on the third. Simple as that. It's really, it's uh, it's great the options that we have here. I uh, do not want Athanasiu on the power play. So Henry Sedina, Crab, De Silva, Nuge, not Fawcett. He's a defensive player. I mean, I know, I know he has that ninety offensive awareness, but he doesn't get the points like he should as a second liner. So. I think we will get a Pozo on there. I'm going to see how he does. Yeah, we'll get a Pozo on there. See how he does there. And let's see. Is, uh, oh, Lilligren on the penalty kill. Not good. <laughs> Eakin, Dino, Zadina. And we will get, hmm. We'll get a Pozo on there. See what he does there. Get Eakin in the face-off circle. And then Dino and Eakin here. And is that it? No. We have Zadina, Heinrich, Krab, Nuge, De Silva, and I will get Fawcett on there. And then I'll put. Is it, you know what? De Silva seems serviceable for faceoffs. He's got a 75. We'll try him out there. And then we'll do the same thing here. Fawcett, get in there. And, uh, yeah, uh, hold on, hold on, Henrich, and then I'll get Nuge in here. There you go. Then, yeah, we're good. So, let's continue. 6-4 win against Ottawa, very nice. Ryan Mowers is back, yep, as figured, so we'll get him back in for Toronto. <laughs> that was pretty quick. Still minus 5, we'll get him back out in favor of Mowers. Then we'll just put everything back to the way it was. There you go, there you go, there you go. Uh, we'll get him back in the power play instead of Opozo. Mowers, there you go. And then... Yeah, I'll leave that the way it is. I want to get Opozo some more time. And then instead of Fawcett, we'll put Mowers back there. And there you go. That looks... Uh, no, no, no. Got to change this as well. Mowers right there. And then that looks pretty good. Yeah, that that looks good. We can go the rest of this month. Actually, is this month done? Uh, no, no, no. Two more games. Okay, so Toronto and New Jersey. And then we will check out the stats. Don't want to do that prematurely. <laughs> Toronto, they're not too good. But of course, we lose against them. 4-3 to three loss. And a 6 to nothing win against New Jersey. So we finished the month 31, 14, and 5. Uh, what do I do? Do I keep going? I could potentially go until the trade deadline. But I would have to end it there. Because we have some crucial, crucial decisions to make this season. So Danny Henrich, 49 points. Crab with 39, 21 goals. Pouliot with 37. Yeah, he's back, boys. He is back after one... Off season there. Zadina with 35. De Silva 34. Nuge 34. Lilligren 33. We're so deep. Mowers with 29. Boychuk with 25. Kreider 24. Fawcett 20. Dano with 15. Eakin with 14. Athanasiu with 13 and 41. Akposa with 8 in 19. What's his hits like? Uh, actually, I'll check that later. We'll just do points for right now. Uh, Bruce with 7. Brodine with 6, Tanav with 4, Bowie with 2, plus minus, 22 for Bruce, 19 Crab, 18 Zadina, and then Athanasiu is minus 5, and Dano is minus 2. Those are the only minuses on our team. Goaltenders, let's see. Uh, Lop has fallen off a little bit, so it looks like Corpusalo is taking over for right now. But uh, we'll continue to give Lop some chances because he is young. He's 24 years of age. He's 86 overall, so... Again, I want to have a fair comparison at the end of the year. We'll go one more month, and actually we will get Corpusalo back in there. There you go. And let us see what happens leading up to the trade deadline, and then that's where we will call it. But obviously before then, we'll check the stats and all that, all the advanced stats as well. Vegas, they're pretty bad. Shootout loss. Okay, we got a point. Can't complain. Florida, 3-2 win. Very nice. New York, 
two to nothing win. Very nice. And Winnipeg, I mean, I hate to keep repeating myself here, so let's just keep going. I mean, 33, 14, and 6, and what is going on here? We must have a trade or an injury or something going on. What's going on? Nothing. Literally nothing. <laughs> I don't know what that was about. <sighs> There's another thing that I think they need to improve on in NHL 19, and that would be simulation speeds. Because, <laughs> uh, I mean, this is not as bad as previous games. If you remember, like, NHL 16, that was pretty bad with simulation speeds, but I think they could do better. 37, 15, and 6 with five games remaining before the trade deadline. Very nice win against Philly, 5-2. to two. As we're just kind of on automatic right now. Yep. Overtime loss. Got a point. Against a Central Division team. Win against San Jose. Almost to 40 wins at this point. I mean, 15-7. That is 22 losses. We can still do the 60-win season technically, but we would literally have to win every game from now on. <laughs> I don't think that's happening. But let's just let's just see. And there's the first waiver claim we've seen all year. Jack Roslovich, no. Don't need him. We have plenty of depth. Two to one win against Dallas. Oh. Oh. Alright. <laughs> Jonas Brodine injured with an MCL sprain until March 29th. Alright. At least he's not injured during the playoffs, but that's that's a big one. We are going to have to put. We're going to have to reunite Tanev and Boychuk. Oops, <laughs> accidentally backed out to the home screen of the PS4. And uh, we're going to have to put someone in here with Bowyu. And that someone has got to be Jamie Alexiak making his first appearance this year. Look at the depth on this team, man. I love it. <laughs> so, uh, what do I do here? So, who went in? Alexiak and then no one else, right? Yeah. Okay, so power play stays the same. Penalty kill, I think, will stay the same. Even though Alexiak's pretty good, I I mean, I, tr I trust this core group of four here of Bolyu, Bruce, Tanev, and Boychuk on the penalty kill. And then, yep, nothing to change there. Extras, nothing to change here. Nothing to change as of right now. But, again, we are coming up on the trade deadline. And we have some crucial decisions to make. Not necessarily right now with... Corpusalo and Lop, but with guys like Pouliot, Bowyu, everyone whose contract is expiring this year, who is not one of our important players, you know, like one of the big contracts that we have coming up in in Fawcett, Henrich, and Crab. There's a win against Boston, so the 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 dream of sixty is still alive, <laughs> technically. So as we go into the stats here. One more time for this episode, and then we're going to have to end it off. This is going way too long, and obviously need you guys' input. Danny Henrich with 60. Nelson Crab with 45. Zadina with 44. Pouliot with 44. Nuge with 41. De Silva with 40. Lilligren with 39. This this team's so deep, man. I know I've said it many times before, but it's so true. Mowers with 34. 22 gold. Wow. Mowers the sniper. <laughs> I mean, wow. oh, wow. I didn't realize... Wow. I didn't realize Mowers was a shooter. I he isn't even really much of a shooter. 186, 142. I guess he just has a really accurate shot. <laughs> As I mean, those shooting percentages, 12 or 10.2 up to a 15.5 this year. My goodness. Plus 13 as well. So Ryan Mowers, the sniper. Interesting. Uh, Pete Boychuk with 32 points. We'll see what the reuniting of him and Tanev does for that. Grider with 29. Fawcett with 23. Eakin with 20. Dano with 19. Okpozo with 13 and 32. Athanasiu with 13 and 41. The injured Jonas Brodin with 9 and 63. Plus 11. So that's the first time he's been that high of a plus in his career here. Rob Bruce. 7 and 63. Tanev with 5 and 63. And Bowyu with 3. Now we'll sort by goals. Crab with 26 so far on the season. Mowers with 22. De Silva with 21. Kreider with 17. Henrich with 16. Zadina with 13. Alright. And assists. 
Hendricks with 44, Pouliot with 36, Zadina with 31, Lilligren with 31, Nuge with 28, Boychuk 26, Fawcett 20, and then we'll check plus minus. Bruce plus 29, Henrich 22, Crab 22, Pouliot 21, Zadina 21, Bolu 16, Kreider 14, Nuge 14, Boychuk 13, Mowers 13. This team is so deep. I love it. Brodeen 11. De Silva, Lilligren, Fawcett, plus 10, Okpozo, plus 9, Tanev, plus 4, Eakin, plus 1, Dano, even, and Athanasiu is the only minus on the team. Beautiful. Penalty minutes, the most penalty minutes on the team is De Silva for 46. We're pretty disciplined. I like it. I like it. Who has the least? Mowers with 4 and Fawcett with 4. Very nice. Now, power play goals. We'll just pe check power play points altogether. Henrich with 20 Power play points. My goodness. Pouliot with 13. Lilligren 13. Nude 13. Zadina 12. Kreider 12. De Silva 12. Mowers 12. Crab with 9. 7 goals. And Boychuk with 5. And Fawcett with 1. My goodness. This team is so... Uh, I I've said it way too many times already this episode. But you guys got it. <laughs> Only two short-handed goals. De Silva and Deno. That's fine. By me. Game-winning goals. Kreider with 5. Shots, Nelson Crab with 246, and next closest one is De Silva with 185, so that's quite the difference. <laughs> and then Mowers with 142, 140, 140 for Henrich and Boychuk. Shooting percentage, Okpozo is up there. Mowers, Kreider, Athanasiu, Eakin, Henrich, De Silva, Nuge, Lilligren, and Crab. Time on ice, Boychuk with a 25-10 per game, and it's not even close for the next closest guy, Brodeen, with a 20-59. That is <laughs> as ridiculous for Pete Boychuk. Face-offs, Zadina, 52.3. Eakin, 51.8. Mowers, 49.5. Nuge, 48.4. Athanasiu, 46.5. Deno, 46.2, so we might want to think about changing that. Hanarich, yeah, just... It looks like Henrich just isn't good at face-offs in general. 45.9. <laughs> Hits. Let's see. This should be interesting. Bruce, my boy, with 131 so far with still 20, uh, 19 games remaining in the season, I believe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's good. <laughs> He's a good one. He's a gem. Crab with 117. Zadina with 116. De Silva, 104. Kreider, 100. Eakin, 88. Brodeen, 87. Tanev, 82. Dano, 77. Lilligren, 70, uh, 57. Boychuk, 54. And, uh, yeah, we'll keep going here. Blocks, 94 for Bruce. 91, Bo Yu. 91, Boychuk. 78, Tanev. 74 for Bo Yu. Or, uh, <laughs> Brodeen. Man, I cannot talk today. Pouliot with 72. Zadino with 24. Dano with 19. Very nice. Giveaways to takeaways. Uh, let's take a look at my takeaways. That's better. Zadina with 55 to 46. Eakin with 48 to 36. Henrich with 47 to 42. Crab with 44 to 25. Lilligren with 43 to 25. My goodness. I mean, that's as a Ford, granted, but still, like, that's insane <laughs> for someone who was originally a defenseman. Fawcett with 39 to 33. Mowers 36 29, De Silva 35 31, Boychuk 32 51, Kreider 31 36, Deno 31 34, Brodine 29 39, Bruce 29 64, Athanasiu 28 40, Nuge 28 33. All right, that's enough of that. Fights Brodine and De Silva with the two fights of the year, and there you go. Goaltenders, let's see. This will be interesting. Yeah, Corpusalo. <laughs> Man, he is making it difficult <laughs> for to make me want to keep Lop. I mean, I do want to give Lop the chance still. But it's going to be quite the mountain to climb for Brandon Lop to keep his spot in the team if he's competing with the Jonas Corpusalo that's playing like this. Oh, my goodness. 939 save percentage. His best season on record ever. Uh, <laughs> hopefully he, uh, all I can say is I hope you can carry this momentum in the playoffs, Corpusalo, because 
I'm really hoping history doesn't repeat itself, but if it does, you're going to need it because if we all know the history of Corpus Allo on this team or on, on this channel in general, it's that he gets no help in the playoffs from his, his offense. So Corpus Allo, my man, you have got to keep doing what you're doing, but you don't need to hear it from me. You just need to, again, you just need to not think about it. Just go do what you've been doing out there. <laughs> keep rolling all right so let's actually check out the ahl because i'm interested to see the stats of mcmuffin yeah 60 60 for bois 53 for edler 47 for pody ross downey with 30 trevor morris with 28 and pistola with 12 plus 19 very nice yeah it looks like the miners are doing pretty well for themselves so not much concern there and Really, the issue here that we have going into the trade deadline is, well, the contracts that we might have to unload. So, uh, goals for per game, 303. First in the division. Goals against per game, 203. My God. <laughs> you know what, boys? I don't know. How do I trade anyone <laughs> when we're playing this well? 27.8 power play. And let me see, penalty kill, 80. Dude, we're the best in the division in every category. <laughs> oh, man. That just made all of our decisions so much harder. It really did. Because how do you trade anyone when the team's playing like this? Last 10, 8, 1, and 1. Away, 21, 6, and 5. Home, 29, and 2. How do you trade someone? <laughs> oh, man. How do you trade someone in a year like this? You don't. <laughs> I mean, I I want your guys' feedback here because this is very important. But I don't think you do. I don't think you trade anyone in a year like this where you're leading your division, not just leading your division in every category, but literally smoking every other team in every category in your division at the very least. So when you take a look at the contracts, Eakin wants to resign Okpozo. Pouliot, Dano, Alexeyak all want to resign. Uh, Crab, Henrich, and Fawcett, these will change since they're RFAs. Nuj, Tanev, Boyu, and Kreider do not want to resign. Nuj is going to have, uh, I don't know if he'll have as big of a contract as he does now with that 8.2, but he's still going to ask for some money in free agency, and we're not going to have that money, so what do we do? Trade him or no? Again, because. Just in a year like this, I don't know. I don't think so. So that'll be about it for this one. It's been a very long episode. Gotta end it off right here. So in the next one, we will finish the year seven regular season. And man, <laughs> this, this is gonna be tough. That's all I can say. See you guys in the next one.